week of Pentecost, Thursday. Do you understand this present time? And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, a little cloud like a man's hand is rising out of the sea. And he said, Go up, say to Ahab, Prepare and go down, lest the rain stop you. And it came to pass in a little while that the heavens became black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. 1 Kings 18, verses 44 and 45. Dearly beloved, Elijah received word from his servant of a little cloud appearing in the sky in the direction of the sea. Immediately the prophet knew that rain was coming, and the end of the great drought was at hand. One was to prepare for such a deluge sent by the hand of God. Indeed, it was not long before the storm clouds came, the wind blew, and the rains fell upon the earth. While it doesn't take a prophet to perceive what is taking place in nature, there are happenings concerning Jesus the Christ and the kingdom of God that go unnoticed by man. This reality is what Jesus was trying to communicate to those who were with him. Then he also said to the multitudes, Whenever you see a cloud rising out of the west, immediately you say, A shower is coming, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, There will be scorching heat, and it happens. Hypocrites! You can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it you do not discern this present time? Luke 12, verses 54 through 56. This present time is the time when Jesus was there with them. It was the time when God had come into this world, that is to say, when the Christ came to redeem the world from sin, death, and the devil. The signs that Jesus did, the lame walking at his word, the blind seeing according to his word, the dead raised at his word, and the gospel preached to the poor, were in fulfillment of the Old Testament promises. This Jesus is the Christ. This son of Mary is the Messiah. This man of Galilee is Emmanuel, that is, God with us. As crazy as it would be to know and then ignore the weather forecasts for storms, hurricanes, and tsunamis, how much more foolish is it to ignore all that has taken place in the spiritual realm? The worldwide flood in the days of Noah, the famine in the times of Elijah, and life on this land all point to a coming time of God's judgment. So also does the incarnation of God and the ministry of Jesus point to a time of judgment, one on the altar of the cross, where the wrath of God for all sins is vented upon the Son of God. Surely, dear soul, you have not searched the scriptures this long and traveled this far with Jesus without knowing that your day is coming as well. Whether it will be your departure from this life, or it is the second advent of the Son of God at the end of history, you are heading in the direction of the judgment seat of Christ. But, as you perceive the coming storms in life and in death, remember and recall what has already happened. The Lord has weathered the storm of the cross for you, and rose again from the dead for you. He has loved you that much, and, right down to his body and blood, has given his all for you. Blessed are those in whom the Holy Spirit has wrought faith to know, believe, and trust in the Savior. Do not think that Jesus will condemn you and all the faithful when you appear before him on the last day. Do you not perceive this present day of grace, mercy, and peace? Prayer. Dear Holy Spirit, through your word, convict me of my sin, and let me behold Jesus my Savior, that I may repent of my sins and live out my days as a child of my heavenly Father in the kingdom of God. Abide with me now and at the end. Amen. Hymn number 235, stanza 4. Left to ourselves, we shall but stray. O lead us on the narrow way. With wisest counsel guide us, and give us steadfastness that we may ever faithful prove to thee whatever woes betide us. Come, friend and mend, hearts now broken, give a token, thou art near us, whom we trust to light and cheer us. 